You fainted because of the heat stroke? Oh, come on. You're already a useless wife, so don't try to bother me even more. Oh god, you're a real pain in the butt, you know that? I'm not going home today. I'm working until late at night. Also, I have an important meeting going on right now. So do something about it on your own. See ya! With that, my husband, Max, hangs up the phone. I fainted and I'm in pain, and this is how he treats me. I guess he doesn't care about me at all. What? The phone call I just had now? Oh yeah, it was something about my wife fainting. Oh, it seems like he didn't hang up the phone. Really, she truly is a useless wife. Oh, I have a great idea. I think I'll take this opportunity to throw her away and marry you since you're young and beautiful. Anyways, let's just enjoy what we have for now, shall we? Is this perhaps? My name is Tessa. I live with my daughter, Rebecca, who just turned five years old, and my husband, Max, who is a hard-working man. Max is a friend of a colleague from the office where I used to work at, and Max was introduced to me by a colleague who couldn't bear to see me depressed after breaking up with my ex-boyfriend who I was dating at the time. We then began dating, and after about three years of dating, we got married. I worked for a few years after our marriage, but now I am a full-time housewife and actively participate in local volunteer activities. The reason I became a full-time housewife was because Rebecca was born. I had actually planned to return to work after my maternity leave, but because of Max, who insisted me to quit my job, I decided to quit my job and become a full-time housewife. According to Max, he says, It is best for children to be with their mothers, especially if she is a girl. Max loved children since we first met, and had always said he wanted a child even when we just started to date. So, when he found out that I was pregnant, he cried with joy. During my pregnancy, he left work and came back home early to be by my side as I suffered from morning sickness. He was a kind husband. He remained the same even after our daughter, Rebecca, was born. Max was a devoted father who bathed Rebecca after he came home from work and took her to parks and theme parks on his days off. But recently, Max has been getting busier at work and was even working on his days off more and more. Dad, what do you want to do today? I want to draw at home. Um, I'm sorry. I'd love to play more with you, Rebecca, but I really have to go to work now. So, let's draw together some other time. It has been about two months since this kind of conversation between Rebecca and Max was held every time he had a day off. It was sad and pitiful to see Rebecca being rejected by Max. Although I was sad, I also thought that Max was working really hard and doing this for us as a family. So, I couldn't really ask him to work less on his days off, which was a luxury we couldn't afford. And some time later, around the time when the summer heat was at its peak, I was strangely concerned about the weeds growing in my garden that day, so I spent the rest of the morning weeding. I took a break for lunch around noon, and as I was finishing up cleaning, doing the laundry, and other household chores, it quickly became late afternoon. It was the time when elementary school children leave school. I took Rebecca with me and went out to help carpooling the kids as part of the local volunteer work. I was impressed by all the elementary school students who greeted me cheerfully in spite of the heat, and we'd finished the volunteering activity without any incident. When I returned home, dripping with sweat, the room was very hot. I immediately reached for the remote control to turn on the AC. But I couldn't put any strength into my fingers to press the switch. 
Then, my vision began to flicker gradually, and the scenery around me began to spin. I was unable to stand properly, and I crouched down on the spot. The wooden floor felt cold. It finally occurred to me when I reached that point. I remembered that I had only had tea once at lunchtime and had hardly drank any water before or since then. I had been making sure Rebecca was hydrated frequently, but I hadn't paid attention to myself. Even while I was thinking about this, my consciousness was fading away. Finally, I could no longer move freely on my own. At that time, Rebecca, who has said she wanted to play in the garden, came back. Seeing me fainted in the living room, Rebecca's eyes grew widely and was surprised to see me lying down on the floor. Mommy, what's wrong? Do you feel sick? Rebecca rushes over to me. I couldn't speak and just nodded. Then, Rebecca, even though she's very young, she sensed the urgency and ran out of the house and brought the neighbors over. Mommy fainted! Please help! The neighbor then used our home phone to call for an ambulance. While the ambulance was on its way to the hospital, I was barely conscious. I could see the worried faces of my neighbors who sympathized me and Rebecca. We arrived at the hospital and I was taken to the emergency room and was treated quickly. As I had expected, it was heat stroke. It seemed to be pretty serious and I was instructed to take proper precautions against heat stroke from now on. Meanwhile, Rebecca was holding my hand tightly. It was as if she was encouraging me, which made me feel a little better. I decided to ask my neighbor, who had been accompanying me the whole time, to leave then. The neighbor had tried to keep me company until Max arrived, but I didn't want to bother the neighbor anymore. I would have to go and thank the neighbor after once I get much better. A little while later, when I was feeling better, I called Max, but I couldn't get through. I gave it some time and tried several more times to call him, but the line never went through. Having no choice, I gave up trying to call Max and decided to focus on getting better. Thanks to this, I finally recovered and was able to walk. The doctor in charge of my case said that I didn't need to be hospitalized, so Rebecca and I decided to go home. The sun had already set long ago, but Max didn't seem to be home yet. On the way home, I stopped by the supermarket and waited for Max to come home while transferring the ready-made meal I had purchased to his plate but I hadn't even heard from him yet. When I finished preparing the meal, I tried calling Max again. After ringing for a while, the phone finally connected. Yes, hello. Is there something wrong? Well, I'm a little busy right now. Oh, good. Finally, I'm able to reach you. I fainted due to a heat stroke today and I was in the hospital for treatment. But I prepared your meal already, so don't worry, okay? I know it's all ready-made meal, but what time do you think you'll be home tonight? Oh, I see. I have an important meeting today, so I'll be home very late. I don't even need dinner. See ya. Max sounded like he was in a hurry and had tried to hang up the phone. Oh, hey! It seemed like he had hung up the phone, but it still seemed to be connected. Perhaps he made a mistake and pressed the wrong button. As I was about to tell Max that the phone was not disconnected, I heard Max's voice talking with someone on the other end of the line. Sorry to keep you waiting. Hmm? Oh, yeah, it's my wife. She said she has some kind of heat stroke. It sounded like someone was talking, but I couldn't hear the voice clearly. From Max's tone of voice, I guessed he was talking to his co-worker. From the pitch of the voice, it sounded like a woman. But Max doesn't have any female co-workers. 
No, it's fine, it's fine. She seemed fine and was probably just exaggerating. I mean, she stays at home every single day and doesn't do anything. I don't know what she's doing, not even going to work. Even though she's a housewife, she makes me do the housework and it's almost as if I'm taking care of our daughter. <sighs> I might have married the wrong person. I mean, my daughter is cute, but you know. I couldn't believe my ears when Max said that. I subconsciously pushed the recording button on my cell phone. Oh, I have a great idea. Wouldn't it be great if I divorced my current wife, took my daughter, and remarried you? A cute daughter, a hard-working young and beautiful woman like you, and I, we'd all make a great family, don't you think? As Max said this, I heard someone cackling and laughing. Then, I heard someone's voice clearly, and the voice was getting close to the phone. Are you asking me to be the mother of your child all of a sudden? Well, your daughter is cute, so maybe that's not too bad of an idea. Well then, you have to promise me. Hurry up and divorce your current wife and become my husband. Yes, I will. Anyways, let's continue what we were doing here. I can be with you for a long time today. And that was when I hung up the call. Just like when I fainted from heat stroke, every power and energy had left my body. It would be strange not to suspect Max to be cheating on me after hearing this conversation. Max had been lying to Rebecca and I this whole time, and he was having an affair with another woman. I thought he was a good husband and a father, and a great family man, but he betrayed me. He used to be so kind. Where did that Max go to? This is absolutely unforgivable. My anger toward Max rose. I want to get back at him somehow. Then I suddenly remembered. I wondered if the call I just heard was recorded properly or not. I checked my cell phone and played back the recorded data. Thank God. It was in the middle of the call, but it was recorded properly. But this alone might not be enough evidence of Max's affair. So later that day, I visited a detective agency with this recorded data. I asked for a background check on Max and listened back to the recorded data I had brought into the agency. At first, we didn't notice it, but there was some casual music playing in the background in the call. The detective told us that the music was from a TV commercial that was playing in a certain hotel. And if it's that hotel, then that hotel would be near Max's workplace. From there, a week-long background check was completed, and I was told the results. As I had expected, Max was having an affair with a woman at work. I had the detective stake out at that hotel on the days when he left for work saying that he would be home late at night or on the days when he worked on his days off and the detective was able to capture Max and his mistress entering the hotel together in a photograph. The detective also checked out the name of the other woman, Ashley, who had recently joined the company. According to the investigation, the two had an affair about a month after Ashley joined the company. In the beginning, they were just exchanging cheeky emails, but they got a taste of it and they started having an affair. Just hearing the story is horrifying, but anyways, now I was finally ready to get back at them. Then came Sunday. Max tried to leave the house again, saying he had to work on his day off, but I already knew that was a lie because I had already checked with his workplace in advance. I had already confirmed with Max's boss that he isn't that busy where he had to work 90 hours per month for the past month and the upcoming months. That was what Max's boss had told me. 
When I tried to confirm with Max's boss, he seemed to get some kind of hint while answering to my questions. But I just thanked him and quickly hung up the phone after. I told Rebecca to go play in her room, and as Max was about to leave, I stopped him and sat him down on the sofa in the living room. Hey, I need to talk to you about something. I've told you before, I have to go to work today too. Stop lying. I know everything. I presented Max with the evidence of the affair that I had received from the investigation. Max then had a surprised look which said, Oh crap. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? While I was in the hospital after fainting from heat stroke, you were happily having an affair yourself, weren't you? Rebecca was asking you to play with her, but you lied and had an affair with another woman, right? Do you realize what you did? Then, Max knelt down on the floor and bowed his head. Oh, I... I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't mean it. Because it's that woman's fault. She forced herself onto me because she knew that I was easy to get to. I'm a victim too. I'll break up with Ashley, and the three of us will continue to be a family as usual. Alright? Max said things that I couldn't tell if he was apologizing for making a mistake or making excuses, so I began to play something for him. It was that recording. Max's face turned red and then got pale as he listened to the recording. The only reason I became a housewife is to fulfill your wishes. And when I say I'm doing the housework, you just take the garbage that I put together. You take care of Rebecca, you bathe her and play with her, but I'm the one who takes care of Rebecca during most of the day. Where did that kind and gentle person I knew go to? Max mumbles on saying, that's... and... but... I'll divorce you just like you wanted. But I will raise Rebecca on my own as I always have. It's not good for her education if she stays with a liar like you. Oh, that's right. Of course, I will charge you alimony as well. You and your mistress will be both charged with alimony. As I said this, I threw the divorce papers at Max. Max just stared at it as it fluttered in the air. Then, Rebecca, who was supposed to be playing in her room, came in. She had apparently gone to the bathroom. Oh? Daddy, you're not going to work today? Yay! Then come play with me. Didn't you say the other day that you would draw with me? Rebecca said that as she hugged Max. At that point, Max finally realized what he had done and how he could never take it back. So he hugged Rebecca back and quietly started to cry. In the end, Max and I got a divorce. When I saw the two of them embracing together, I really questioned myself if I did the right thing, thinking that I might have taken her father away from my own daughter, but I decided that, in the end, I chose the right thing. Some might think, how could I divorce someone over a single mistake? But thinking about Rebecca's future, I felt that our divorce was inevitable. Because a person who has betrayed you once is sure to betray you over and over again. After the divorce, as I had declared previously, I demanded alimony from Max and his mistress and received it. I will be using this money for Rebecca. According to the rumors, the mistress who had a habit of spending money on luxurious things, sold all the brand bags and accessories she had been collecting in order to pay the alimony and desperately trying to make ends meet. It seems that she didn't want her parents to know that she was paying alimony for the affair. The mistress, who was left almost penniless, is now quietly and soberly going about her business. Max apparently thought about returning to his parents' home near his workplace, but he was accused of his own affair and got disowned by his parents. He now lives alone in an apartment, and since Max and his mistress were having an affair in the office, there were a few people who were suspicious of their relationship, and Max's divorce seemed to have made the accusation even stronger. I had a hard time explaining the divorce to Rebecca. 
We're going to live separately with your dad from now on. When I said this, Rebecca looked excited and asked, So, when can we see daddy again? So, I decided to let Rebecca see Max regularly until she was older and had learned to understand things better. Of course, I will always be there to accompany her. I guess at some point, I'll have to tell Rebecca exactly how the divorce happened, but right now, this is probably for the best. Besides, every time Max sees Rebecca, he is reminded of the foolishness of his actions. I hope he realizes what he had done and regret what he has done. As for Rebecca and I, we are able to continue to live in the house we have been living, thanks to the support of my parents. Thankfully, I also found a job. I happened to mention that I was looking for a job to someone I was volunteering with in the community, and he introduced me to someone the following week. Plus, it was a job that I had experienced in the past, so although there were some blank in between, I should be able to regain my instincts soon. Besides, the person who introduced us to the job and our neighbors are also looking out for us in some way. When we meet them in the supermarket, they would casually check to see if we were having any problems or bring us food to share. After my divorce from Max, I became a single mother having a child. So, I am anxious about many things that can happen in the future. But with the support of the kind people around me, I have a feeling that I will be able to lead a happy life.